Have all of the skeptics now become communists? This question alone has a lot of baggage behind it. And I can't really even go over it without explaining a lot of different things and going over a few concepts. The skeptic community, for me, and I'm sure many other people, invokes a little bit of nostalgia. The skeptic community and the anti-SJW phenomena were not what first introduced me to politics, though I know for many people they were. But still, I spent quite a few of my younger years watching content from many of these YouTubers, and just thinking of Anita Sarkeesian owned Part 78 brings back a little bit of nostalgia. Politics certainly did feel a lot simpler back then. Now though, that community has passed away. The individuals that make up it are, in many cases, still around, but the community as a whole no longer exists. However, like I already said, the question that I started this video with has a lot of baggage, which really needs to be unpacked before I can even attempt to answer it. First is the name of this so-called community, the Skeptic Community. Just using this name, I know will have some people thinking that it's supposed to be an insult, though that's not how I mean it. Some of the members of this community did happily refer to themselves as the Skeptics, but some others did not really like the label and felt like it may give the wrong impression. Many other labels were invented and usually quickly fell away. I don't even remember most of them, though I remember one other common alternative was the rationalists, but wasn't quite as popular. The only other term that might be equally as fitting would be the anti-SJW community, though that too I feel like is somewhat inadequate, more so at least than skeptic. Because though the anti-SJW phenomena was of course central to the skeptic community, they weren't really the only people that made those types of videos. If we include in the skeptic community people such as Milo, Ben Shapiro, or Steven Crowder, then we are stretching it far beyond any coherence. Okay, but if we have a name for the community, what even was this group about in the first place? As I already said, one of the central elements was the anti-SJW phenomena. For many of these people, the first videos they ever made was criticizing some sort of crazy blue-haired SJW for doing some sort of crazy classic SJW thing. Sargon is one such example of this, who made that type of content from the very beginning. There were other skeptics, though, people like, say, TJ Kirk, aka The Amazing Atheist, who, as the name of his channel would suggest, originally made videos dealing with atheism, but later moved on and started making videos about the SJW phenomena. In 2014, with the Gamergate phenomena, much of this community became focused on the issues of ethics in gaming journalism and progressive influences in the video game industry. This is, of course, where the many epic debunkings of Anita Sarkeesian come in. But as I've already said, there were other identifiers of the skeptic community than just the anti-SJW part. The two other ideological aspects would be that most of them were left-wingers who were upset with how the left was going at the time, and most of them were atheists. Now, though most of them were left-wingers, most of them also weren't really professional left-wingers. That is, most of them didn't really understand the left very well. They just sort of were in those circles for much of their life, and that's just kind of the politics that they defaulted to. I think Sargon and Shuan Head are two particularly instructive examples for this. Sargon said that he came from a working-class background, and he had office jobs, both of which were generally left-wing environments. Somewhat similarly, Shu said that she didn't really understand politics much, she just didn't like the crazy SJWs, and she wanted free healthcare. This is revealing of another, though not quite ideological, aspect of the skeptic community. Most of them were just laymen. Very few were actually professionals before starting their YouTube channels. They were just people that had some sort of concerns about what was going on, and they thought they could make a go of it with a YouTube channel. And that's important, because that means that most of these people didn't really have deep connections to any political industry. If you compare that to, say, someone like Ben Shapiro or Milo Yiannopoulos, who I was referring to earlier, Ben has been writing articles since I think he was less than even 18, and similarly, Milo, before his YouTube stint, had spent many years writing at Breitbart and other publications. The final aspect of the skeptics is that, as I've already said, most of them were atheists, or at least something quite close to that. This is especially important because most of these content creators were quite heavily influenced by the new atheism movement. And this is quite relevant because many of them saw themselves quite explicitly carrying on the same battle for truth that people like Christopher Hitchens or Richard Dawkins were fighting. 
Only this time, the fundamentalists that they were fighting were SJWs instead of evangelical Christians. However, despite the skeptic community seeming quite left-wing on the surface, they were very rarely accepted within left-wing circles, and the prominent form of left-wing identity politics was not just seen as a rejection of certain left-wing policies. It didn't really matter how much they wanted free health care. To most left-wingers, or at least most establishment left-wingers, rejecting these things was rejecting their entire thought process. Saying, I support free health care, but I'm against all of this identity politics stuff, to a progressive, is like going to a Christian and saying, I hate your God, but hey, some of your virtues are kind of cool, so can't we bond over that? So the skeptic community on the whole was seen as a right-wing community, and if you would have asked any normie progressive about it, they certainly would have described any of these figures as right-wingers. Particularly representative of this, I think, is when Sargon had debates with a small left-wing YouTuber called Kevin Logan about whether or not Sargon was really left-wing. Since then, Sargon has moved to the right quite a bit, though he certainly still holds some left-wing views. But at the time, he held many of them. But they didn't matter, because to a progressive, it doesn't really matter how much you love free health care if you reject their actual ideological vision of the universe. And there isn't actually anything wrong with that. Because free health care, or what it really is, public health care, is just a good. It is not the good, and any singular good should be subordinated to the good. So the ideological vision of the progressive is their understanding of the good. And it would in fact be actually quite disordered if they didn't subordinate individual goods to the good. But okay, what is even the point of any of this? I've just spent seven minutes going over the history of the skeptic community, something which I'm betting most people watching this video are already pretty familiar with from their own personal experiences. Well, as I said at the beginning of the video, I'm trying to answer a question here. Are all the skeptics communists now? Well, the obvious answer to this is, of course, no. Sargon, the king of the skeptics, or the former king of the skeptics, is in fact not a communist. Not only is he not a communist, since the skeptic days he has moved progressively to the right, as I've already said. And as much as more conservative people may like to deride Sargon as a centrist, it's quite notable that he was barely accepted even in the most right-wing political party in the United Kingdom. On some issues, his personal positions are more right-wing than anything that was ever written in any of UKIP's manifestos. Okay, so that's pretty conclusive. Sargon may not be as right-wing as I and some others want him to be, but he's certainly no communist. And if the king of the skeptics is not a communist, then all the skeptics are clearly not communists. But... Are some, are many, of the skeptics now communists? Or at least something close to being a communist? The answer to this is yes. The two most notable examples are Croton T, or now just Kraut, I think he goes by, and Shu on Head. And I need to, again, give a brief history lesson on both of these figures. Shu on Head, and I don't really mean this to be mean, I think she probably would even agree with this if she heard this, was not exactly the deepest thinker back in the skeptic days especially now that she has changed at least a bit, she probably would actually enthusiastically agree with that. She would say now that she is much more left-wing, she understands these things better, and back then she may have said some true things, but she would probably admit that she was naive and didn't really understand the issues very well. Now, that is not to say that she has totally repudiated her skeptic history. She does still admit that the SJWs, who she very often said were bad, are indeed bad. She just says now that they weren't really that big of a deal, that they just represent a small fraction of the left, and they don't really represent its spirit. They're just an extreme that you can find on the internet. Kraut would say a similar thing. In fact, I have a quote right here from him from Twitter recently. Society is not run by intersectional activists. The people we both wasted years complaining about are nothing but a fringe segment of pop culture. Though Kraut's history is interesting, and it's not quite the same as Shu's. Shu was a total political novice. Kraut was quite a bit more educated on politics. I'm not saying he was an expert or anything, but he knew what he was talking about a fair bit better. He also had a decent command of history. 
back in the skeptic days, and he clearly still does since most of the videos he makes now are about history. Both Shu and Kraut have hitched their wagon to the more left-wing part of the mainstream left. Shu, in particular, has made her radical sympathies as obvious as you could possibly make them. She's buddies now with the quote-unquote libertarian socialist Vosh. Now, does that really make either of them communists? Maybe not, but that's not really the point. The point is, they've both hitched their wagons to the exact thing that they spent years of their life, as Kraut said, protesting against. As much as either of them may want to pretend, intersectional progressivism is the dominant force on the left. It's not just the dominant force, it's the only force that's really allowed to exist. Anything else that wants to exist on the left needs to pay homage to them or is expelled, just as the skeptics many years ago were expelled. And this is actually a perfectly sensible and winning strategy for both Shu and Kraut, and I commend their wisdom in choosing it. SJWs may be very annoying, and they even may be bad, but both Kraut and Shu were always really left-wingers at heart. And if they want free healthcare, or whatever really even they want, it makes sense to go with the winning side to try to achieve it. And however annoying SJWs might be, it really can't beat how good free healthcare is. But why did any of this happen in the first place? Well, the answer to that is pretty simple. It's the same basic critique I've been making throughout this video, and it's the same critique that many have made about the skeptics over the years. Their fundamental problem is that their belief system was almost purely negative. Being anti-SJW doesn't really mean anything if you can't figure out what you're pro. They've finally had to make that decision, and what they're pro has taken precedence over what they were anti. Thanks for watching. Please donate to my Subscribestar or Patreon if you enjoy this content, and please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, and share these videos with anyone who you think might find them interesting. And a special thanks to my donors, Emmett Vestry, The Right Cafe, yourself, Siphius Rex, Lita, Quo Pregranator, Haxorius, Adzutko, Josiah, King of Evil Florida and the Moon, Seth Apex, Richard, Cringewalker, Zian Harris, and Thomas Thomist.